So how would you describe your own attitude to high school, good student or troubled student? Depends on who you're asking. If it was my teachers and, and the subjects probably. I wasn't a great student. I think I probably ticked the boxes I needed to, but was more interested in extracurricular activities. I think the teachers would agree with that. What was the most important thing you learned while filming One Island of Good? That's a hard question. I don't know. I think if anything, um, it's more of a feeling. I probably feel a bit disappointed. Maybe I was a bit idealistic about the, the fact that in New Zealand we're supposed to have um, really good support networks for young people and I don't think that's actually the truth. Um, so if my kids needed that and that didn't exist I'd be pretty upset by that. That's probably the, the thing I've, I've learned the most from it is that we need better support systems for people who need it. Was there a particular person that you saw great change in during filming? You know, I think when you're filming with young people, um, and we were filming over about a year, um, they're going to grow up, you know, like it's a really short period of time, one year, but for those young people, when you're 14, 15, 16, that's a lifetime. I think they all changed, and I probably saw more change in them when we showed them the film six months after we finished filming than I did at the end of our filming block. Were there students who did not want to be in the film? And what were their reasons? There were students who wanted to be in the film and there were students who didn't. The ones who didn't want to be in the film on any one particular day simply weren't interviewed or uh, weren't involved. There was one uh, young guy who decided he didn't want to be in it right from the beginning and so his face has been blurred out. What were the reasons? I don't know. They just didn't want to be involved and that's fair enough, so we've just respected that. They haven't uh, featured heavily in the, in, the, in the content. Do you know the swear word count in the film? Uh, when we were on the trip in Nepal, we gave them a camera to say whatever they wanted to, like a diary cam or, or something like that. There's a lot of that material that we can't use, <laughs> probably. Yeah, there, there was a lot of swearing. There was a lot of swearing. I don't know. I don't know what the count is. There's probably a bit of swearing from, from the team who was putting it together too. All around, lots of swears. Why did you go, get into old Got kicked out at school. Uh, it's fighting. There was a couple of assaults and um, willful damage and possession of an offensive weapon. Violence, bullying, selling drugs. I'm brought to tears quite regularly around here when I hear the stories about some of our kids. They lack a lot of confidence, and that's because the mainstream system has let them down one way or the other, or their families and whanau have let them down in one way or another. The majority of them come through here because their academic levels are very low. And I know one of my kids, they will rather throw a chair at a teacher and get themselves kicked out than reveal that they cannot read. The fact that we can let them go at 16 and they go off to do their own thing in society is a huge problem. If the state were a parent, that would be neglect. There was a classic mismatch in alternative education. We've got our most demanding and difficult, neurodevelopmentally challenged, potentially violent young people congregated together, sometimes with our most idealistic and committed but least experienced teachers. We are going to take all of you who want to to Nepal. If only one of them ends up growing up and raising amazing children, then we've done our job and, and we've saved the country a lot of money in the process. We're not going to solve everybody's problems, we might not solve anybody's problems, but what we do do in the here and in the now, um, and be that take people to Nepal, be that to actually smile at a young person, to take notice, and if that can be a seed that we sow, and if that seed grows even just a little bit, then that's investing in the next generation. People, they're so nice and caring. Children here, they've got next to nothing, but they smile every day. I haven't been to a place that's this crowded and this poor. I like it, but I hated it at the start because I felt real homesick and I needed a bong. The kids are, are tremendously resourceful. It's like having a bunch of five-year-olds trust with MI5 agents.
They've been smoking, they've been drinking, they've been tagging. The world's going to smack them in the face. Alternative education school is probably the last chance these young people get to either re-engage back in school or get opportunities to go into training and employment. AE is a flawed model. You chuck 18, 19, 22 of the kids that are just not working in mainstream and you put them all together, how the heck's that going to work? Now this whole trip's just making me angry and frustrated and it's such a flawed model.